What you're about to hear is the result of information I received during a private dinner that took place one block away from the Trump Tower. The private venue was on West 58th Street in Manhattan, New York City, where seven others and I met. It was there that I met a man who shared information with me that rocked my outlook for the U.S. dollar over the next six months. In short, my research indicates Donald Trump could be planning a radical reboot of the U.S. dollar. You'll see why in just a second. Not only do I believe this is coming, but I believe I know when it's going to happen, by New Year's Day. Now, we don't know it will happen by then for sure. It could happen a little bit earlier or a little bit later, based on how it all unfolds. But I anticipate it could happen before this date. That's why I'm delivering this message to you. I've personally positioned more than $1 million of my own money ahead of this potential reboot. And I want to show you how and what you should do with your money. My name's Jim Rickards, by the way. And the reboot event I'm about to share with you is the culmination of the deep research I've done in my three New York Times bestselling books and my life's work advising the U.S. government. It was something Ronald Reagan supported as president but couldn't get accomplished because of political pressures. But based on a private dinner I just had with a man I'll call Mr. Davos, with connections to some of the world's most important elites, I'm convinced Donald Trump can and will get it done. The key is a secret money deal that Trump could sign in the coming months. If he does, I'm certain well-positioned investors could make as much as 11 times the money. It will mark a fundamental shift away from the awful Obama years. In fact, investors who stay stuck in Obama land are going to face big losses. More importantly, I believe the dollar reboot will happen by New Year's Day. That's less than five months from today. But as you'll see, this could happen much sooner than that, so you'll need to prepare now. Your life and the character of America is about to change forever. But this message isn't a breaking news bulletin. It's a time-sensitive opportunity you need to act on immediately to reap the benefits. You see, if Donald Trump signs this new money deal, the U.S. dollar will reboot, sending one investment, not gold, soaring as much as 1,000%, creating a huge windfall for Americans positioned correctly ahead of time. Seem unbelievable? What if I told you President Donald Trump used a similar but much less significant monetary deal in the 1980s to make a massive 320% windfall for himself? It's true. It was enough to take every $500,000 he invested and turn it into more than $2 million. He even called it, quote, easier than the construction business, close quote. But you don't need millions of dollars to profit this time around or be a real estate mogul or be president of the United States to take advantage of the windfalls that come after these monetary accords are made. You simply need to see the signs that a massive monetary shift is coming, and one is. Then position yourself accordingly. Trump's secret money deal would be a massive shift, a total dollar reboot, and a far bigger opportunity than what Donald Trump profited from decades ago. I've done the math given today's economic environment, and if you're positioned properly before this dollar reboot is made, you stand to make as much as 1,000% by the time it's in effect. The key isn't gold or a stock, bond, currency, or Bitcoin. Yet, if you combine the secret with a few other simple moves, then the way you work, live, raise your family, retire, and enjoy your free time will be radically changed for the better. I'm personally using over $1 million of my own wealth on these moves to position myself and my family for what's coming. You've likely never heard the steps I'm going to recommend to you. Usually, only very low-key, very down-to-earth Americans who are secretly rich know about these moves and I'll share it all with you. I'll show you what's going on behind the scenes in the Trump White House and what I recommend you do right now because of it. But I'd consider you crazy if you weren't asking yourself, who am I to know all of this? Why would Trump's team talk to me? And how could I possibly know this possible dollar reboot when none of the mainstream media outlets have reported on it? Let's back up and take those one by one, starting with who I am. I have all the normal credibility you'd expect from the deepest political or economic insiders in America. I'm the author of three New York Times best-selling books, Currency Wars, The Death of Money, and The Road to Ruin, warning about the economic threats America faces. I have a high profile on popular financial television, print, and online media outlets. Turn on the TV and tune in to CNBC, Fox, Bloomberg, or Russia Today, and you'll likely see me on the channel. I'm also the authority on the importance of sound money and on fixing today's monetary system. That alone is enough for me to speak credibly about the coming dollar reboot and the one investment that could soar by at least 1,000% because of it. Yet that's where my similarities with, with my peers end, because my credibility reaches far, far deeper than anyone else you know. My work as a currency war advisor for the Pentagon, CIA, and national intelligence community brings me into direct contact with the top echelons of the U.S. power structure. They've given me a top-secret clearance, too. I've testified in front of Congress. 
I've been in the West Wing of the White House on official business multiple times. I helped in the 1980s negotiation to release U.S. hostages from Iran. I've sat deep in the Treasury Department, stared officials in the face, and warned them about crises like 2008 years before it happened. They ignored me. And while I can't be specific with senior military or politicians' names or statements, I can tell you they're preparing for something big. In one of my most high-profile missions, I helped senior U.S. military strategists at America's Warfare Analysis Laboratory. We conducted their first-ever financial war game to determine threats against the U.S. dollar. I routinely rub elbows with Federal Reserve board chairs like Ben Bernanke, five-star generals, and NSA directors like Michael Hayden, finance ministers of various governments, presidents, prime ministers, Fortune 500 CEOs, and the world's most powerful investment bankers. They ask me for my opinions on things just like this potential dollar reboot and tell me things they'll never say publicly. In fact, our firm has been sending password-protected research to a high-level cabinet member within the Trump White House for months now. He's literally responsible for almost everything the federal government does. I'm a personal friend with an influential secretary in President Trump's cabinet. Not to mention, a member of our research network has received an email from the man who's President Trump's number two in the White House asking for advice on the economy. Ultimately, my connections, like the insider who told me about Trump's dollar reboot, are where I get my best information. That's why I'm confident that by December 31st, 2017, Donald Trump's signature on an important agreement will trigger a dollar reboot. And by the time the ink is dry, one and one investment only, you've never heard of it, trust me, could shoot up by at least 1,000%. Obviously, nothing's guaranteed when you invest. That goes without saying. But I firmly believe this opportunity is your best chance at these kinds of gains. The reason is simple. Trump could soon give the U.S. dollar the biggest reboot in over 100 years. Before I show you exactly what this dollar reboot is, when the switch is likely to be flipped, and how it will reboot the dollar and change everything for your life and the life of our nation, let me show you why President Trump needs to reboot the dollar if America is ever going to be great again. This is important, and it will be the key for you to understand why just one investment could soar by at least 1,000%. Donald Trump tweeted America's problem very clearly. The Fed continues to flood the market with U.S. dollars. Wrong move. The Federal Reserve, America's central bank, has lowered interest rates and printed nearly $4 trillion new dollars out of thin air since the economic crisis in 2008. That's equivalent to nearly one quarter the size of the entire U.S. economy. Look at this chart. It shows you the Fed's flood of new dollars that President Trump was talking about. Since 2008, many analysts and commentators have feared this chart because they believe it will lead to massive price increases in the economy or hyperinflation. But everyday prices haven't gone into hyperinflation. In fact, the number one consequence of all this money printing so far hasn't been inflation at all. It's been debt. This is likely the number one reason why Donald Trump's slogan is Make America Great Again, because America has gone from great to greatly in debt. Total U.S. debt across all private sectors has risen to nearly $60 trillion. That's over three times as big as the entire U.S. economy. If you add the federal debt to that number, you get $80 trillion. That's more than four times the size of the U.S. economy. Just look at this chart of total debt in the United States. In other words, if you and every single American took 100% of your annual income and tried to pay off the national debt for four years straight, we would still have $4 trillion of debt left to pay off. The problem started in 1971. That's when Richard Nixon killed the U.S. gold standard once and for all. You can see it happen on the chart I just showed you. As soon as Nixon kills the gold standard in 71, debt begins to skyrocket. From that point on, crushing debt, overconsumption, offshoring of American jobs, and the ripping off of Main Street by Wall Street took hold. And since the 2008 crisis, these terrifying trends have picked up speed at an alarming rate. Obama brought our country to the brink of ruin. He added as much federal debt as all presidents before him, from George Washington to Bill Clinton, combined over the entire 220-year history of the United States. The Office of Management and Budget and the Congressional Budget Office project the debt going as high as 250% of GDP in the years ahead if Trump doesn't make a change. In fact, the Government Accountability Office just reported this year that the U.S. is at risk of fiscal failure. And Harvard economics professor Kenneth Rogoff says, There's no question that the most significant vulnerability is the soaring government debt. It's very likely that will trigger the next crisis as governments have been stretched so wide. An investor's business daily reports that Current total debt of roughly 105% of GDP is already in the danger zone, and based on historical economic studies, this is where nasty things can happen. 
All this is the result of too much debt, too many Obama policies, and too much meddling by the Federal Reserve. But America didn't always have this problem. The United States used to have a dollar backed by gold. Back then, the country had far less public and private debt compared to the $80 trillion today. The government was small and couldn't squander your and my tax dollars. We couldn't wage endless wars. There was barely any inflation. Our money was stable. Our economy was growing. Simply put, America was great. And I believe Donald Trump will take an important step. One best-selling economist says, The gold standard era, defined as, say, 1815 to 1913, was arguably the greatest period of human advance ever, at least in matters of economics, culture, and technology. But when we went off the gold standard, hardworking Americans' income flatlined, and the uber-wealthy made all of the economic gains. Here's the proof. Since we've gotten off the gold standard, America has declined. The economy has failed its workers, and our nation isn't respected abroad. But now we have a huge opportunity to right the ship. Just listen to President Trump in his own words. Bringing back the gold standard would be very hard to do, but boy, would it be wonderful. We'd have a standard on which to base our money. This is why one of America's greatest financiers, John Pierpont Morgan, said, Gold is money and nothing else. And why President Ronald Reagan warned, No great nation in history that abandoned the gold standard ever stayed great. Reagan wanted to reform the U.S. dollar with his own monetary accord to tie the greenback to gold again. He even recorded a commercial about it that was buried for 36 years until my research network used our contacts to dig it up and publicly circulate it. Ronald Reagan believes government causes inflation, not business, not labor. In the 1960s, the federal government decided to stop tying the value of the dollar to gold. This permitted them to print as much money as they wanted to spend, and that's why we've had this crippling inflation. We'll never regain price stability until we restore some form of gold backing to the dollar. As president, my first priority will be to make the dollar the most trusted currency in the world. Reagan even tried ordering a congressional commission to investigate how a modern gold standard could be set up in America. But career politicians killed Reagan's effort right from the beginning. Yet, after a private dinner near Trump Tower with those close to the situation, I now believe Donald Trump could accomplish what Reagan couldn't a total reboot of the U.S. dollar, a move that will completely rewrite America's money rules and potentially make well-positioned investors in one particular investment, not gold, as much as 11 times their money. But time is running very short. The dollar will die if it's not rebooted immediately. The U.S. dollar, and by extension the global economy, is facing an imminent threat. Obamacare, the Obama debt, Obama's open borders, Obama's retreat from the world stage has all but killed what made America great. Obama put the interests of America's retirees, U.S. workers, veterans, and everyone else who used to make up our middle class behind the elites. He helped the big banks, international corporations, and even foreign leaders at the expense of you and me. That's why Donald Trump was elected. Voters knew we couldn't take another four years of Obama if Hillary Clinton won. And thank goodness we put Trump in office, because now President Trump can take steps to avoid disaster. But he needs to act quickly. America is in severe danger of going through what physicists call a phase transition. You might call it the tipping point. Here's a simple illustration. Picture yourself in a room of 500 people listening to a speech. Now, imagine four people stood up and immediately ran out of the room very fast. What would you do? Probably nothing, right? You would think they needed to go to the bathroom or got an urgent call or something, but you would probably stay seated. Now imagine the same scenario, except that instead of four people, 100 people suddenly get up and run out of the room as fast as they can, all at once. What would you do then? I dare say you'd get up and exit the room right behind them. You'd figure there was a fire or imminent danger that they knew about, and you didn't. But you wouldn't stick around to find out. You'd run for the exits as fast as possible and ask questions later. The death of the dollar will be no different. Countries aren't sticking around to figure out whether the U.S. can really pay back its debt or wait to see if their dollar reserves are going to keep losing their value. Like billionaire investor Warren Buffett said, people are right to fear paper money. It's only going to be worth less and less over time. And he's right. The U.S. dollar has lost 96% of its value since the Federal Reserve was created in 1913. Meanwhile, the national debt has skyrocketed. The dollar and debt are two sides of the same coin. That's why many countries are relentlessly abandoning the dollar. Typically, most foreign governments invest their surplus or savings in U.S. financial assets. Global trade is typically conducted in U.S. dollars, too. The dollar is what's called the world's reserve currency. As one Forbes columnist put it, there is a global currency. It's called the U.S. dollar. 
But all of that is about to change if the dollar is not rebooted. The dollar is getting dumped around the globe because of our debt, spending, and money printing. Just look at how we're being betrayed by our closest allies and attacked by our sworn enemies. The United Kingdom $18.7 billion betrayal. Join China's foreign exchange trade system to bypass the U.S. dollar and trade directly in sterling and yuan. China $100 billion attack. The Chinese official sector sold almost $100 billion of U.S. stocks over the past year. They've been reducing their treasury holdings, and they've secretly been stockpiling hundreds of tons of high-purity gold bullion bars. Iran, $1.2 billion attack, has used gold to avoid U.S. sanctions and the dollar-based payment system called SWIFT. South Africa, $2.5 billion attack, has joined with the BRICS nations to create a bank that will extend at least $2.5 billion so far in 2017 in non-dollar credit to the world. Hong Kong Monetary Authority and South Korea, $83 billion betrayal. Both have joined and expanded their roles in the CMI or Chiang Mai Initiative, which is a non-dollar currency swap agreement with the 10 countries that comprise the ASEAN nations, including Indonesia, Cambodia, Brunei, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. India, $8.2 billion betrayal has made agreements with Japan to receive yen for internal development projects instead of turning to U.S. development institutions like the World Bank for dollars or going to the U.S. government itself. Japan, $69 billion betrayal, has agreed to circumvent the dollar and trade directly with China in billions of dollars worth of yuan and yen. One news outlet says the move aims to hedge the risks of the dollar's fall in the long run as the world's key settlement currency. Switzerland, $24.17 billion betrayal. Agreed to help China develop its offshore yuan market so more countries can diversify away from dollars into yuan. According to Bloomberg, the Swiss franc makes the seventh major currency that can bypass a conversion to the U.S. dollar and be directly exchanged for yuan. Sweden, Norway, and Denmark, $2.5 billion betrayal. Created a euro currency beeline to Iceland that doesn't require dollars. South Korea, $20 billion betrayal. Has created bilateral currency swap agreements with Australia, China, Malaysia, and Indonesia that last until 2020. They've renewed a multi-billion dollar yuan-yen currency swap with Japan. And they're also actively trying to forge a direct currency swap deal with the United Arab Emirates. Russia, $7.8 billion attack, is actively recruiting nations to trade oil in rubles instead of dollars and having its largest state-owned oil company issue its corporate debt in Asian currencies instead of privileging dollars. Bloomberg says its aim is to move away from quoting petroleum in U.S. dollars. United Arab Emirates, $55 billion attack, created a bilateral trade deal with China to trade in dirham and renminbi. One expert said the Chinese are trying to shoot for an alternative currency to the dollar. Saudi Arabia, $750 billion attack, threatening to take a $750 billion prop out from under the U.S. dollar if America doesn't meet its demands. The International Monetary Fund's betrayal. Adding the Chinese yuan to its supranational currency, the special drawing right. One millionaire commodity investor remarked upon the news saying, the U.S. dollar is a very flawed currency. The yuan will probably challenge the U.S. dollar. The total amount of de-dollarization is at least $1.14 trillion. And the list of dollar backstabbers you just heard isn't exhaustive. The true amount of dollar dumping is likely much higher than that. Now, answer me honestly. Can America ever be great again if the entire world is avoiding the dollar like the Black Plague? Of course it can't. From the year 1450 to roughly 1925, from Portugal to the British Empire, the world's superpowers have risen and fallen on the strength and acceptance of their currencies. Based on centuries of data analyzed by the president of world markets at a multi-billion dollar bank, the average lifespan for a world reserve currency like the U.S. dollar is a little bit more than 90 years. And get this, the dollar has been the world's reserve currency for 91 years. The clock is ticking and Donald Trump knows it. He knows he needs to restore confidence in America and the U.S. dollar immediately. That's why he needs to reboot the dollar ASAP. And I've received an important data point recently at a private dinner with a man that absolutely no one has ever heard of, that this is in motion. It helped me confirm that America is on the path I'm telling you about. This is why I'm so confident that if you position yourself in one specific investment, not gold, you could see at least 1,000% gains as America becomes great again. But it's not just the de-dollarization of the world that's making this so urgent. You see, countries have not only stopped buying U.S. Treasuries, but they're selling them at a record clip. Bloomberg reports, 
America's biggest creditors dump treasuries in warning to Trump. The Economist says, as America's economic supremacy fades, the primacy of the dollar looks unsustainable. And Forbes shocked readers publishing, U.S. role in global economy declines nearly 50%. Even Donald Trump himself, before taking the oath of office, made a very public move to dump the dollar in his own business dealings. Watch this newsreel. Donald Trump says gold is better than cold, hard cash. Donald Trump is renting out the 50th floor of 40 Wall Street for 10 years to Apmex, American Precious Metals Exchange, and accepting three 32-ounce gold bars as a security deposit. Well, sadly, we all know what's happening to the dollar. The dollar is going down, and it's not a pretty picture, and it's not being sustained by proper policy and proper thinking. This was an opportunity, and maybe an opportunity to show people what's happening with the dollar so that we can do something about it. Afterwards, Trump said, it's a sad day when a large property owner starts accepting gold instead of the dollar. The economy is bad, and Obama's not protecting the dollar at all. If I do this, other people are going to start doing it, and maybe we'll see some changes. Trump understands what's at stake. Sooner than later, a critical mass of foreign governments and investors will start exiting the dollar. It will be the point where everyone stampedes out of the crowded room, to continue my earlier analogy. At that point, the full faith and credit of the U.S. government will evaporate. People will not have trust in the financial system. Our international monetary system built on the dollar, the money multiplier, and debt will collapse. The U.S. Treasury Department tells us what to expect at that point. Quote, it would be unprecedented and has the potential to be catastrophic. Credit markets could freeze. The value of the dollar could plummet. U.S. interest rates could skyrocket. The negative spillovers would reverberate around the world. And there might be a financial crisis and recession that could echo the events of 2008 or worse. Close quote. I'm confident there is a fix, though. The key will be a bold new monetary policy by the Trump administration. The Wall Street Journal published an article confirming this, saying Trump's real challenge will be the U.S. money system itself. The solution, it said, lies in monetary policy, a total reboot of the U.S. dollar, one that will reset America's economy and send one unique investment soaring. Every dollar you choose to invest in it could increase as much as 11-fold. Let me show you what this reboot is right now. I believe President Trump will host an international monetary summit at his winter White House in Florida, the historic Mar-a-Lago Resort. Using his stature as leader of the free world, he'll bring the financial leaders of the globe together. This would include delegates from the U.S., China, Japan, Germany, Italy, France, the U.K., and the International Monetary Fund. Then they'll agree to simultaneously revalue all of their currencies against gold until the price reached $10,000 per ounce. If you're skeptical, I'll give you ironclad proof that this could happen in a second. The Federal Reserve Board will then call a special board meeting, vote on the new policy, walk outside and announce to the world that effective immediately the price of gold is $10,000 per ounce. The Fed will make the $10,000 price stick by using the Treasury's gold in Fort Knox and the major U.S. bank gold dealers to conduct open market operations in gold. Here's how that works. The Federal Reserve will be a gold buyer if the price hits $9,950 per ounce or less and a gold seller if the price hits $10,050 per ounce or higher. The world's other central banks will agree to the same. For mathematical reasons, I'll explain in just a second. Gold will need to be $10,000 an ounce. No more, no less. This will immediately put an end to the currency wars and debt-based dollar system. It will be a one-time reboot period that will put the world on solid footing for economic growth for decades to come. The immediate adjustment would create a massive windfall for gold bullion holders known as the gold mining shares, though that's not the true opportunity here. It would also create a lot of market volatility as people react to the announcement. Now, I write and speak about $10,000 gold all the time. I wrote a New York Times bestseller on the topic. Most people just roll their eyes. They assume that $10,000 per ounce is a made-up number or that I pulled it out of thin air or I'm just trying to get attention. None of these things are true. The $10,000 per ounce number is actually the result of some straightforward mathematics that I'll show you in just a minute. It's the gold price Donald Trump will need to use to reboot the U.S. dollar and the world's international monetary system. This isn't a far-fetched concept, by the way. Since the world financial crisis in 2008, many of the world's governments have been buying physical gold in record amounts. In fact, according to a recent report by the Official Monetary and Financial Institutions Forum, world central banks have been buying gold at a rate of 385 tons per year since the 2008 crisis. Those are levels last seen when the world was on the gold standard pre-1971. Why are they buying so much gold? Because they know gold is going to be money again, 
And the more gold they own, the more leverage they'll have when Trump calls the world's financial powers together to reform the monetary system at his Mar-a-Lago resort. President Trump said it himself, the golden rule of negotiation, he who has the gold makes the rules. The good news is the United States and our negotiator, Donald Trump, have the largest gold stash of any country. Look, this means everything is full steam ahead for the Mar-a-Lago monetary accord and the dollar's reboot. Even better, according to a recent Gallup poll, more than twice as many Americans supported returning to gold as money as those who didn't. I'll bet if you took an updated poll today, given the enthusiasm around Trump, you'd get an even better response. Simply put, there's no stopping this dollar reboot. Its time has come. The Mar-a-Lago Monetary Accord will be a turning point in American history. And it could be a turning point for you financially as you reap up to 1,000% gains from the dollar reboot investment I'll tell you about in just a minute. But first, just in case you think this is the sort of thing that can't happen here, you should know Trump's dollar reboot would be the 10th major reset in the last 100 years. Over and over again throughout American history, an old economic order stagnates and needs to be rebooted. One of my close friends, former Deputy Secretary of the Treasury, Kenneth W. Dam, refers to these reboots as rewriting the rules of the money game. In fact, most people are surprised to know that the reboots like the one Donald Trump could be planning have happened nine times already in history. They always follow the same pattern. World leaders hold a summit at a high-profile location that will get down in the history books, and they reboot the rules of the monetary game to stabilize the system and get the world back to economic growth. This is all well-documented history going back a century. The Genoa Accord, May 1922. 34 nations gathered at the Palazzo di San Giorgio in Italy to reboot what was called the Gold Exchange Standard and restore the international monetary system. The Threadneedle Street Accord, 1931. With gold flowing out of the UK, loans from New York and Paris exhausted, and a budget crisis underway, the Bank of England decided to abandon the gold standard and devalue the sterling. This rebooted the economy and stopped the crisis. The White House Accord, 1933. Franklin Roosevelt unilaterally creates a two-step plan to try and reboot the US economy out of the Great Depression. First, he confiscated the nation's private gold holdings. Then he ordered a 60% devaluation of the dollar, moving the price of gold from $20.67 an ounce to $35 per ounce. The Bretton Woods Accord, July 22, 1944. 44 countries and 730 people gathered in New Hampshire to reboot the post-World War II monetary system. The dollar was tied to gold at $35 per ounce, and the rest of the world's currency was tied to the dollar and convertible into gold. The Smithsonian Accord of December 1971. The group of 11, U.S., U.K., Japan, Canada, France, West Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, Italy, Sweden, and Switzerland agreed to reboot the dollar by devaluing it 8%. The Jeddah Accord in July 1974. The U.S. was facing an oil crisis, runaway inflation, a crashing stock market, and recession. Nixon sent Henry Kissinger and William Simon to Saudi Arabia and rebooted the dollar by creating the petrodollar deal. This priced oil solely in U.S. dollars in exchange for defending the Saudi royal family with U.S. military might. Since everyone needs oil, everyone needed dollars so they could buy it. This massive new demand for dollars saved the American financial system. The Plaza Court, September 22, 1985, signed at the Plaza Hotel. There, the top financial officials from the United States agreed with UK, West Germany, France, and Japan to reboot the dollar to a lower value to help the world economy. The Louvre Court, February 22, 1987, After the Plaza Accord didn't work out so well, a new accord was signed at the Louvre Museum in Paris to correct the mistakes. The damage was so bad from the Plaza Accord that the group agreed to reboot the dollar once again and halt the dollar's devaluation. The Shanghai Accord on February 27, 2016. I was one of the leading researchers trying to sound the alarm on this accord. This was a failed Obama policy. His idea was to purposely weaken the dollar in order to help China from collapsing because China's currency is pegged to the dollar. It hasn't helped the U.S. economy at all. In fact, it's put it at risk. The period that followed the Louvre Monetary Accord in the late 1980s was called the King Dollar Period. There was massive economic growth, and the United States was the sole superpower, respected around the world. But today, that old deal is stagnating. That's the reason we need a new dollar reboot. One Forbes contributor confirmed in writing about the world economy, people are hoping for a reboot. And the intelligence service Stratfor speculates, the Trump administration may begin considering unorthodox measures. Their forecast includes Trump negotiating a new coordinated monetary intervention among the world's powers, a technique that has fallen out of fashion in the past two decades. 
This is the key to Trump restoring confidence in America and the dollar by instituting a new gold-backed dollar at $10,000 per ounce. This could reboot the world economy, create economic growth and stability, and even better, it could send one specific investment, not gold, soaring, and make you 11 times your money if it does. That's why I've prepared a new strategy to help you reap tens of thousands of dollars in profit from this new Trump Accord that could be coming. You're going to want to read it immediately and take action. But before I show it to you, there's got to be one big question on your mind. Why would the Federal Reserve or big banks in America ever allow Trump to institute a gold backing to the dollar? After all, Janet Yellen doesn't like gold, and the Fed and big banks benefit from our debt-based system and have huge political power in this country. That's a great question, and normally I'd agree with you. But something very different is in play this year, something I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. By December 31st, President Trump could have total control over the Federal Reserve, the first time for any president since 1914. Actually, December 31st, 2017 could end up being a conservative date. Everything I'm explaining could conceivably happen much sooner than I'm explaining here. President Trump could flip the switch on this dollar reboot much sooner than anyone expects. Of course, I can't tell you all these things will happen by December 31st for certain. President Trump's opinion could change or he could alter his plans. Maybe events happen as I expected or later or earlier. But that's why it pays to get positioned for this right now. Otherwise, the opportunity might pass you by. That's because the stars have aligned in a very special way. You see, there are seven total seats on the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. That's the group that makes our central bank's decisions. The president appoints each governor. And there were two vacancies on this board toward the end of President Obama's presidency. Those are two Fed governors that Trump now gets to appoint. But just recently, another governor of the Federal Reserve, Dan Tarola, just resigned. His resignation means there are now three vacancies on the board. This is the most Federal Reserve seat appointments at one time by any president since Woodrow Wilson in 1914 when he first created the Federal Reserve. But it gets better. Of the remaining four governors, one is a Republican. His name's Jay Powell. You don't hear much about him because he's outnumbered by Democrats right now on the board. But soon Powell could be joined by three new Republican appointees that Trump makes. That will give Republicans a majority of four seats on the Federal Reserve Board. But it gets even better. In addition, Janet Yellen's term is up in seven months, and the vice chairman's term is up soon after that. That means Trump could be able to appoint five governors in the coming months, including a chair and two vice chairs. Trump will have six out of seven board seats in Republican hands. In effect, Trump will own the Fed. The Republicans will also have the White House and a majority in the House of Representatives and the Senate. Conservatives will soon be a majority on the Supreme Court, too. And there are more Republican state legislatures and governors in the state mansions than at any time since Civil War Reconstruction. This means President Trump could have zero resistance to changing the debt dollar system we have. He can conduct a full audit of what the Fed does, who makes the decisions there, and steer it to do what he wants. And you heard what he wants in this video clip earlier. He said, going back to the gold standard would be hard, but boy, would it be wonderful. But now it won't be hard, and he can do just that. That's still not the best piece of evidence, though. The new Federal Reserve chair is a matter of when, not if. So when this new chair is installed, Trump will have five more Federal Reserve appointments, the full support of Congress, and the rest of the federal and state governments, plus the judiciary, to institute a gold-backed dollar. The New York Sun confirms the opportunity is at hand, reporting, President Trump will have a choice opportunity that few, if any, presidents have had for monetary reforms needed to end the age of fiat money and the false economy. And Bloomberg proclaimed, Make America gold again. Calls for everyone's favorite standard are back. And Politico admitted that not since Reagan, perhaps earlier, have so many gold bugs had such high levels of influence in the White House. Meanwhile, there are three different pieces of legislation already under review in Congress. One, to totally reform how U.S. monetary policy is conducted. Another, to release over a century's worth of secret Federal Reserve information to the American people and a third to create a monetary commission to research the exact monetary changes the Mar-a-Lago Accord would institute. This is all urgent news for you. The coming weeks could mark one of the most significant transformations in the international monetary system in over 30 years. Since the dollar is still the linchpin of the system, the dollar itself will be affected. Whatever affects the dollar affects you, your portfolio, and your personal financial security. It is vital that you understand the changes underway in order to protect your net worth and even prosper in the coming transition. Trump's dollar reboot could mathematically ensure you quadruple-digit gains. Let me be clear. The only gold price that will work for Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago Accord, as I see it, is $10,000 per ounce. 
This is not a made-up number. This is not my opinion. This is not complicated. If they choose more than $10,000 per ounce, we'll have severe inflation. And if they choose less than $10,000 per ounce, we'll have severe deflation. It needs to be $10,000 per ounce. That's a mathematical certainty. And it can assure you up to quadruple digit gains if I'm right. Go ahead, check my math. $26.5 trillion in money supply times 40% backing divided by 1 billion ounces of gold equals $10,000 per ounce. It starts with what's called the global M1 money supply. That's the total amount of money around the world. I believe it's roughly $26.5 trillion by the time this happens. Then I use a 40% gold backing for our money since that's what the original Federal Reserve Act passed by Congress mandated. The next step is easy. Just use 8th grade math. Take global M1 money supply and multiply it by 40%, our gold backing. Then take that number and divide it by the official amount of gold in the world, which is about 33,245 tons, or roughly 1 billion ounces of gold. In the end, you'll get about $10,000 per ounce. Now, if the numbers I use fluctuate, that exact 10,000 per ounce may vary slightly. But the truth is, the gold math is the gold math, no matter if the stock markets go up, down, or sideways. To go from today's price of about $1,300 to $10,000 in 15 minutes would be a 669% revaluation of the dollar. I'll admit it's radical, but we need a radical change. But suppose I'm wrong and Trump's Fed decides to do only an 80% reboot to start. That would still mean that gold would go from under $1,300 per ounce today to $5,000 per ounce. Then it could do a second reboot from $5,000 to $10,000 per ounce. The point is, there are a few different ways that Trump's Fed could reach its potential goals. The most important thing is to expect it to happen. But you're probably thinking, I hear you, Jim, and I found this educational, but call me at 2.30 the day before Trump signs the agreement and I'll go buy some gold. I have two answers for you. One, you're going to want one really specific investment, not gold bullion, for the chance to make at least 1,000% from the shift, but you won't be able to get it at that point. Two, you're also going to want to own physical gold, but again, if you wait, you won't be able to get the gold at any price. The price will take off instantly, but you'll be standing there watching it gap up on television, going to $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 an ounce, while frantically calling your dealer saying, get me some gold. And you know what the dealer's going to say? Sorry, we're sold out. Then you'll try the U.S. Mint and ask again, sell me some gold. And the clerk will tell you, sorry, we're back ordered for the foreseeable future. It's already common for U.S. silver eagles to be sold out and on back order, even in relatively calm economic times. Either way, you're not going to be able to get your gold or silver when you need it most. That's my point. 